it's just it, it's you know it's really crazy to think that this is like the last the last four pages of his whole fishing careers since he first appeared on the hit show deadliest catch in 2007 josh harris has been a main player riding the rough seas alongside his father and captain phil harris after his father died in 2010 following a stroke he suffered josh had big shoes to fill and pressed on as best he could receiving his captain's license in 2013. Well, Josh seemed to be forging his own path at the helm of the Cornelia Marie. With a team of seasoned fishermen by his side, Josh quickly established himself as one of the standout stars of the hit show Deadliest Catch. Over the years, he's captivated audiences with his fearless leadership and impressive fishing skills, solidifying his place as one of the most legendary captains in the history of Deadliest Catch. Up until the fall of 2022, life seemed to be full of possibilities for Josh. That all changed, however, when the past came to haunt him. Now that the truth is out about a horrifying thing he did when he was younger, everything has changed. No one can guarantee the future, but it's safe to say that you won't be seeing Josh anywhere near a reality TV show again. What happened? What could be so awful that a beloved star of one of the most successful reality TV shows would be immediately exiled and banished? Without further ado, let's explore the real reason Josh Harris was fired from Deadliest Catch. For me, part of the fishing is being with these guys. This is my family, you know, this is my family. The Deadliest Catch community has suffered its fair share of heart-wrenching losses over the years. Tragically, in 2015, Young producer Joseph McMahon was taken from us in a shocking act of violence outside his apartment. That same year, the crowd fishing world mourned the loss of fan favourite and veteran captain Tony Lara, who passed away from a sudden cardiac arrest. Three years later, Captain Blake Painter, beloved by many, passed away at just 38 years old, likely due to substance abuse. The sad toll continued in 2020, with the loss of deckhand Melon Reyes, who also died at the age of 38, and fisherman Nick McGlashan, who lost his battle with addiction at the young age of 33. These losses have left deep wounds in the hearts of all who knew them and will never be forgotten. Josh's love for fishing started at a young age, as he learned the ropes from his father, Phil. As he grew, Josh honed his skills and became a master of his craft, always seeking to improve and innovate his fishing techniques. With a legacy to live up to, Josh eagerly stepped into his father's footsteps, embracing the high expectations placed upon him. And time and time again, he exceeded those expectations, showcasing his natural talent and unwavering passion for fishing. In 2017, Josh made the brave decision to take a step back from Deadliest Catch and focus on his personal well-being. This pause in his journey allowed him to confront and overcome the struggles that he was trying to suppress for a while. After taking a year to work on his recovery, Josh returned to the show stronger and more determined than ever. Over the years, he's captured the hearts of viewers, appearing in 184 episodes of Deadliest Catch and becoming a beloved fan favourite. With his unwavering spirit and impressive skills on the high seas, Josh continues to inspire and entertain audiences everywhere. Deadliest Catch has been able to expand its success with a spin-off, Deadliest Catch Bloodline, which premiered in 2020. The show follows Harris and Casey McManus, as well as local fisherman Jeff Silver, while they take on the waters of Hawaii's Kona coast. Harris himself seemed incredibly excited at the whole thing. I could definitely see myself getting a place in Hawaii and fishing that out for months at a time, Harris shared in 2021. There's a lot of money to be made. Josh has truly hit the jackpot, not just in his successful fishing career, but also in his personal life. Although he's yet to tie the knot, Josh has welcomed a child into the world with his longtime partner, Jenna Bullis. The two have been close friends for over a decade and share a beautiful daughter, Kinsley, who was born in 2013. On what it's like raising Kinsley, Harris has said, She's seven going on 30. She has me wrapped around her little finger. Yes, she's a really good manipulator. Way too smart at seven years old. I remember I was kicking cans around the road and stuff and she was watching documentaries and how to operate on dogs and cats. Knowing he has a young daughter makes the news that came to light in 2022 all the more heartbreaking and shocking. As of September 2022, Josh Harris's connection with Deadliest Catch changed as a result of a shocking news that was made public about his past incident. 
In 1998, Harris was convicted of an inappropriate and illegal act involving a minor, which was revealed in a now deleted Reddit post. In 1999, he was arrested due to the charges stemming from allegations that he committed a heinous crime against a young girl in July of 1998. Josh Harris faced accusations of inappropriate touching towards a young girl who was reportedly a neighbor and daughter of a deckhand, so basically a family friend. At the time, Josh would have been around 15 or 16 years old. Not only that, the victim also informed her mother of the event and then the mother reported the allegations directly to the police. Due to DNA processing delays after evidence was collected from the scene of the crime, Harris wasn't formally arrested until 1999. A search warrant was served on March 25, 1999 and after the examination of the items obtained was completed, the crime lab matched DNA to be Josh. After his arrest, he was placed under house confinement with his father and stepmother. He was not permitted any contact with the victim or any minors under the age of 12 without adult supervision. The fact that he was under house confinement with his father complicates the feelings of many fans of Deadliest Catch. It's clear that the legendary captain knew about his son's troubled past and yet he allowed him to be featured on a show beloved by millions. Well, the moral implications of this are certainly up for debate. On October the 4th, 1999, the Snohomish County prosecutor filed a charge against Josh for a serious offense involving a young girl. However, the future reality star reportedly agreed to lesser charges of misconduct and inappropriate communication with the minor. On January the 6th, 2000, Josh confessed. On July 14th, 1998, I touched the victim in a way that would have made a normal person feel uncomfortable. I also then spoke to her in an inappropriate manner, discussing topics that were not suitable for her age. When I acted in a way that made the victim feel uncomfortable, one of my intentions was to fulfill my own personal desires. According to Washington State Court records, Harris was found guilty and served a period of nine months. He also reportedly took part in an evaluation to better understand and manage his personal behaviors related to affection and relationships. The Discovery Channel has stayed mostly silent on the case, but has sent a very clear message through a single statement. We've been made aware of this issue. Josh will not appear in future episodes of this series. Although the channel has not publicly delved into the details of the case, this decision clearly conveys their stance on the matter. Now, soon after the news broke, the section on Discovery's website for Deadliest Catch Bloodline was gone. Fans were greeted with a message that read, Page not found. This page is not available at this time. Clearly, Discovery was trying very hard to clean up a disturbing, sad mess. Harris himself has stayed out of the spotlight, not sharing anything on social media since summer of 2022, right before his dark past finally caught up with him. What isn't still clear is how the channel will handle the many past episodes Josh Harris has appeared in. It would be a massive undertaking to retroactively edit Harris out of a show he was featured so prominently in. He's also just made an appearance in Deadliest Catch Bloodline. Well, it's clear he won't be making appearances in the spin-off going forward, but will the show still go on without him? What about the Deadliest Catch franchise? Will fans remain loyal to a show they've loved for years now that they know the truth about one of its biggest stars? Only time will tell.